You're also kind to keep coming back every year, and I love you for it. Thank you so much. Uh, I have the best time in the world. I hope you do, too. And I hope that's why you keep coming back, because this is a party to celebrate li Matt's life, who he was, and who he would have become had he been given the opportunity. Uh, and Dennis, before I forget, I love you. And I feel especially appreciative to be able to say that after spending 28 days attached to the hip in Europe. <clears throat> I don't think we've spent that much time together without one single separation in our whole 40 years of marriage. It was an experience. Um, and thank you for that. It was uh, an experience. Um, we had uh, an amazing opportunity to partner with the State Department to tour uh, Eastern and Central Europe this summer. Um, we also made a visit to Israel in July. Just don't ever go to Israel in July. I'm just saying, saying way too hot. Uh, but the opportunity that we had to meet folks there trying to do the same things we're trying to accomplish in the States and everywhere in the world was truly a learning experience for us because we observed what's going on in those places is what was going on here 20 years ago in terms of how we talk about who we are and what we want out of life. They're still so afraid to tell their stories. They're still so afraid to be who they really are at work. They meet secretly. They have their own language, their own places to go to socialize. They're very exclusive of anyone not part of their community, afraid to be inclusive of anyone else that they don't know for sure will accept them or not, and that includes family. They don't want to tell their families who they are because they're fear of rejection. Their families are afraid that their kids will just someday disappear because they're so new out of Soviet domination where that was the rule of the day. They were taught that hate of anything they didn't understand. And in those days, if you were gay, one day you could be there and the next day you could be gone. So families are very fearful for their children and the most they care about. It takes a great amount of strength and fortitude and hope in a future that will welcome these family members and their loved ones into a world of acceptance and inclusion, which is what we're starting to see here in the States. We have areas where it's very accepting, the bubbles where we never think about anybody who lives in rural America who may be facing rejection from school, parents, job, community in general, church especially. Uh, what we need to remember is that those people are still out there, and it was certainly brought home to us when we did our work in Europe. It's very disappointing that they have not yet figured out a way to tell their stories. But it's the catch-22, right? They're fearful to tell their stories, but what they don't understand is nothing is going to change until they do tell their stories. And that is one thing that Dennis and I were able to share while we were gone, is this is one thing that does work. Tell people who you are. It's the only way we get rid of the stereotype. It's the only way people began to look at us as folks just like them trying to achieve success and happiness in a world that sometimes just doesn't want anybody to be happy. But if that's your right, and you know how to fight for it. Be who you are. You are who you are. You love who you love. And that's just the way it is. And the sooner everybody begins to recognize that and live their lives that that is the truth, then things do change. That is one thing we have done right in this country as activists and advocates, as we have told our stories. As straight allies, our stories are even more important, or at least equally important, to those of the members of the community, because sometimes what we say has a bigger impact than what they say. Sometimes I feel like if I were a member of the gay community and I would say things on a stage that I say every day, the audience would be thinking, oh, there's Charlie Brown again, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> but they listen to what I have to say because of how I got here. I lost my precious son to a murder caused by anti-gay hate. Am I angry at those two young men who took Matt's life? You bet I am. I'm angry at the situation. I'm angry that the world that they lived in was a world that told them it was OK to do that to Matt. That is wrong. That is morally, ethically wrong. I don't know how anyone can ever think that that would be OK in any world, in any time, in any history of the existence of this planet. It is not right to ever take anyone's life for any reason, or to marginalize or discredit who they are. Uh, 
our goal in starting the Matthew Shepard Foundation was to be there for young folks trying to figure out who they were. At the time, we felt that that was the generation that was really struggling. But the longer we were in this work, we understood that it's every generation that's struggling with different degrees of acceptance in different eras of our history. Young people now, teenagers, they look at me when I talk about Matt and they go, really, that's what the world was like then? That was only 14 years ago, folks. Just think how far we have come. But our teenagers in today's world have never lived in a life without someone like Will and Grace, something with a gay, positive depiction always in front of their face. Now, if you're going to tell me Will and Grace, Jack and Karen are stereotypes, oh, I totally agree with you. We all know a Jack and we all know a Will. And we all know a Grace. And we all know a Karen. <laughs> but the truth is, those stereotypes exist for a reason, because those folks exist. But what it did was put the gay community in front of everybody's face, and those folks on that show lived real lives. They had ups and downs, they had real jobs. Yes, they were funny, but they made us feel, dare I say, comfortable. And now in popular culture, they are everywhere, everywhere, and beloved by everyone. Just like how popular Ellen is and how much her following has influenced the commercial world when the way JCPenney stood up for using her as a spokesperson. That was an incredible moment. 